It is powered by electricity. You have Nikola Tesla, one of the greatest scientists to ever live to thank. However, even though the genius had a weird personal life, he left some pretty terrifying predictions that the authorities tried to keep secret and have just been made public. Most times, the life of brilliant figures are interesting, but Nikola Tesla's life was much more than interesting, even as he left behind a legacy that will last forever. Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 as an Austro-Hungarian Empire subject in the mountainous region of Lika on the Balkan Peninsula. His father, Malusin, and mother, Duka, were both of Serbian descent. Tesla's father was a stern but loving Orthodox priest who also happened to be a gifted writer and poet. Tesla immersed himself in his father's library from a young age. And Tesla obviously got some of his creative traits from his mother, who was a hard-working woman with many talents. She designed appliances to help with household and farm chores, including a mechanical egg beater. Tesla began his education at home and later attended a gymnasium in Karlstadt, Croatia, where he excelled in his studies. His ability to perform integral calculus in his mind was an early indication of his genius, leading his teachers to suspect he was cheating. During this time, young Nico came across a steel engraving of Niagara Falls. In his mind, a massive water wheel was being turned by the more powerful current. He solemnly told an uncle that one day he would travel to America and capture energy in this manner, and he did exactly that 30 years later. However, despite his early inventiveness, Tesla did not consider himself an inventor until he was a young adult. Tesla, who was passionate about mathematics and science, aspired to be an engineer but was constantly oppressed by his father's insistence that he enter the priesthood. At the age of 17, Tesla contracted cholera and cleverly extracted an important concession from his father. The older Tesla promised his son that if he survived, he would be allowed to study engineering at the prestigious Austrian Polytechnic School in Graz. Tesla's wish was granted and the whole world would be changed by this ardent young man. Tesla began his mechanical and electrical engineering studies at the Polytechnic School where it didn't take long for his brilliance to shine through. One day, a physics teacher showed Tesla's class a new Gram dynamo, which could be used as both a motor and a generator by using direct current. After observing it for a while, Tesla speculated that it might be possible to eliminate commutators, which are inefficient sparking connections. This, his professor joked, would be like constructing a perpetual motion machine. But Tesla would not let go of the idea which he pondered for years. He intuitively knew that the solution lay in alternating electric currents. It wasn't until Tesla was 24 working for the Central Telephone Exchange in Budapest that the answer came to him. He said one afternoon he was walking with a friend through the city park and reciting poetry. A portion of the poem which he uttered jolted an idea in his mind. He quickly grabbed a stick and drew the diagram on the sand and the world has not remained the same. This was the humble birth of the induction motor. Tesla was hired by electric power companies in Strasbourg and Paris to improve their DC generation facilities after his discovery in Budapest. He tried unsuccessfully to interest investors in his AC motor concept in Germany and France. However, it was obvious that in order to realize his vision, he would need to meet another of the world's greatest electrical engineers, Thomas Alva Edison. Tesla arrived in New York City at the age of 28 and was astounded by what he discovered. He said that he left behind a very beautiful, artistic, and fascinating homeland to live in a place that was machined, rough, and unappealing. The genius felt America was a century behind Europe in terms of civilization. Meanwhile, Tesla, the Serbian immigrant, hoped to start a new life with four cents in his pockets, some mathematical computations, a drawing of a flying machine concept, and a letter of introduction from Charles Batchelor, one of Edison's European business associates. Here, Tesla's life would intertwine with Edison's. In the late 1870s, electricity was first introduced in New York. Edison's incandescent lamp sparked an unprecedented demand for electricity and his direct current power plant on Pearl Street in Lower Manhattan was quickly becoming a monopoly. Single poles carried dozens of crooked crossbeams supporting sagging wires on the streets, and exposed electrical wiring was a constant danger. 
Unwary children would scale the poles only to meet an untimely electrical death. In fact, Brooklyn residents became so accustomed to dodging shocks from electric trolley tracks, they named their baseball team the Brooklyn Dodgers. However, despite the risks, wealthy New Yorkers rushed to have their homes wired, including a certain banker named J.P. Morgan who had invested heavily in Edison. This was the situation when the six-foot-four immigrant from Eastern Europe walked into Edison's office. Tesla handed Edison his letter of recommendation, which read, My dear Edison, I know two great men and you are one of them. This young man is the other. Tesla then went on to describe his engineering work and plans for an alternating current motor. Now, Edison knew little about alternating current and had no desire to learn more. In fact, Edison perceived AC power as a threat. But there was something different about Tesla, and Edison hired him right away to improve his DC generation plants. Tesla claimed Edison promised him $50,000 if he succeeded, possibly thinking it was an impossible task. However, the prospect of so much money was great motivation for the poor immigrant. Tesla and Edison shared a genius trait in that neither of them seemed to require much sleep. Edison could go on for days catnapping on a sofa in his office. Tesla claimed that he worked from 10.30 a.m. to 5 a.m. the next day at the Edison machine works. Tesla claimed that even in his old age, he only slept two or three hours per night. The resemblance ended there, though. Tesla relied on flashes of inspiration, visualizing the invention in his mind in minute detail before proceeding to the construction stage. Edison was a trial and error man who defined invention as 5% inspiration and 95% perspiration. Edison was a self-taught artist. Tesla received his formal education in Europe. It was only a matter of time before the differences became a source of contention. Tesla announced the completion of his work several months after Edison hired him. When Tesla asked to be paid, Edison was taken aback. He explained that the $50,000 offer was made in jest. Tesla resigned immediately, shocked and disgusted. Out of work and broke, Tesla turned to menial jobs. But word soon spread that a foreigner with unusual talent was digging ditches to survive. Investors approached Tesla and requested that he develop a better method for arc lighting. Despite the fact that this was not the opportunity he had hoped for, the group agreed to finance the Tesla Electric Light Company. Tesla got to work and created a one-of-a-kind arc lamp with a beautiful design and efficiency. Unfortunately, Tesla was out of his depth in the financial aspects. All of the profits went to the investors, leaving Tesla with a pile of worthless stock certificates. But his fortunes were about to change. Mr. A.K. Brown of Western Union agreed to invest in Tesla's AC motor concept. Tesla quickly developed all of the components for the system of AC power generation and transmission that is used universally throughout the world today in a small laboratory just a short distance from Edison's office. During this time, Tesla described the incredible way he worked. He said, the motors I built there were exactly as I imagined them. I made no attempt to improve the design, instead simply reproducing the images as they appeared to my eyes, and the operation always worked as expected. The struggle to create his motor was over, however the battle to commercialize it was just getting started. Tesla applied for seven US patents in the field of polyphase AC motors and power transmission in November and December, 1887, a complete system of generators, transformers, transmission lines, motors, and lighting was included. The ideas were so novel that they were granted without being challenged, and they would turn out to be the most valuable patents since the telephone. When a daring Pittsburgh industrialist named George Westinghouse, the inventor of railroad air brakes, heard about Tesla's invention, he believed it could be the missing link in long-distance power transmission. He arrived at Tesla's lab and made an offer to buy the patents for $60,000, which included $5,000 in cash and 150 shares of Westinghouse Corporation stock. He also agreed to pay $2.50 in royalties for each horsepower of electrical capacity sold. Tesla quickly splashed half of his newfound wealth on a new laboratory with more inventions in mind. And with Tesla's patents breakthrough, a full-fledged industrial war erupted. 
In effect, the future of industrial development in the United States was at stake, and whether Westinghouse's alternating current or Edison's direct current would be chosen as the preferred technology. However, there is a macabre footnote to this story. A murderer was about to be executed in New York's Auburn State Prison's first electric chair. Professor Brown had succeeded in illegally purchasing a used Westinghouse generator in order to demonstrate the extreme dangers of alternating current once and for all. William Kemmler, a convicted ex-murderer, was the guinea pig, dying horribly on August 6, 1890 in an awful spectacle far worse than hanging. The method was later known as Westinghousing. But despite the negative press, Westinghouse and Tesla were doing well. The Westinghouse Corporation was awarded the contract to illuminate the Chicago World's Fair, the world's first all-electric fair. The fair was also known as the Columbian Exposition, and it commemorated the 400th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America. When competing with the newly formed General Electric Company, which had taken over the Edison Company, Westinghouse cut G's million-dollar bid in half. Much of G's proposed costs were tied to the amount of copper wire required to use DC power. The winning bid from Westinghouse proposed a more efficient, cost-effective AC system. On May 1, 1893, the Columbian Exposition opened. President Grover Cleveland pressed a button that evening, and a hundred thousand incandescent lamps illuminated the fairground's neoclassical buildings. This city of light was created by Tesla Westinghouse and 12 new 1,000-horsepower AC generation units in the Hall of Machinery. The Tesla polyphase system of alternating current power generation and transmission was proudly displayed in the Great Hall of Electricity. For the 27 million people who attended the fair, it was abundantly clear that AC was the power of the future. From then on, alternating current accounted for more than 80% of all electrical devices ordered in the United States. Tesla would soon turn his attention to another endeavor, which would also prove to be turbulent and lead him down multiple rabbit holes. Several scientific advances had already shed light on the high-frequency phenomenon. In England, James Clerk Maxwell mathematically demonstrated that light was electromagnetic radiation, that is, light was electricity, vibrating at an extremely high frequency. Heinrich Hertz of Germany demonstrated experimentally that an electric spark sends electromagnetic waves into space. These discoveries identified radio waves and sparked intense speculation about new electrical possibilities. Tesla started looking for a device that could transport him to this uncharted territory. Higher frequencies, he knew, would have numerous technical advantages. Lamps would be brighter, energy would be transmitted more efficiently, and everything would be less dangerous because the energy would pass harmlessly across the body. Tesla's initial goal was to create lamps with revolutionary brightness and configuration by approximating the frequency of sunlight. This, he hoped, would replace Edison's incandescent lamp, which used only 5% of the available energy. Tesla began his high-frequency research by building faster rotary AC generators. However, as he approached 20,000 cycles per second, the machines began to fly apart, leaving him far short of his goal. But the answer came in the form of a remarkable device known as a Tesla coil, which is still in use today. This invention, which was patented in 1891, took an ordinary 60 cycle per second household current and increased its frequency to hundreds of thousands of cycles per second. The coil could generate extremely high voltages in addition to high frequencies. Tesla created some of the first neon and fluorescent lighting using high frequencies. He was also the first to take X-ray photographs. However, these discoveries paled in comparison to his November 1890 discovery in which he wirelessly illuminated a vacuum tube by transmitting energy through the air. This was the start of Tesla's lifelong obsession with wireless energy transmission. The inventor quickly discovered that he could transmit and receive powerful radio signals using his newly created Tesla coils when they were tuned to resonate at the same frequency. When a coil is tuned to a specific frequency, resonant action literally magnifies the incoming electrical energy. Tesla was ready to transmit a signal 50 miles to West Point, New York by early 1895. However, disaster struck the same year. 
Tesla's laboratory was destroyed by a building fire. The timing could not have been more inconvenient. Guglielmo Marconi, a young Italian experimenter, had been hard at work in England developing a wireless telegraphy device. In 1896, the young Marconi obtained the first wireless telegraphy patent in England. His device only had two circuits and, according to some, could not transmit across a pond. Later, Marconi set up long-distance demonstrations, sending signals across the English Channel with a Tesla oscillator. In 1897, Tesla filed his own basic radio patent applications. They were granted in the year 1900. On November 10, 1900, Marconi filed his first patent application in America, which was denied. Over the next three years, Marconi's revised applications were repeatedly rejected due to the priority of Tesla and other inventors. In 1903, the patent office observed that many of the claims are not patentable over Tesla patent numbers 645576 and 649621 of record with the amendment to overcome said references and Marconi's pretended ignorance of the nature of a Tesla oscillator being little short of absurd. However, Tesla was about to learn how fickle American patents could be. The Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company Limited began to thrive in the stock markets in 1900, owing primarily to Marconi's family connections with the English aristocracy. The stock of British Marconi rose from $3 to $22 per share, and the glamorous young Italian nobleman gained international acclaim. Edison, Tesla's former employer, and Andrew Carnegie both invested in Marconi, and Edison became an American Marconi consulting engineer. Then, on December 12, 1901, Marconi transmitted and received signals across the Atlantic Ocean for the first time. When one of his engineers commented that it looked like Marconi got a jump on him, Tesla responded, Marconi is a nice guy. Allow him to continue. He is making use of 17 of my patents. Tesla's calm confidence was shattered, however, in 1904 when the United States Patent and Trademark Office abruptly and unexpectedly reversed its previous decisions and granted Marconi a patent for the invention of the radio. The reasons for this have never been fully explained, but one possible explanation is Marconi's powerful financial backing in the United States. Tesla was preoccupied with other issues at the time, but when Marconi was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1911, he was enraged. In 1915, he sued the Marconi company for infringement, but he lacked the financial resources to pursue a case against a major corporation. Tesla's radio patent number 645576 was not upheld by the United States Supreme Court until 1943, a few months after his death, allowing Tesla to have the last laugh posthumously. However, this was a selfish decision. During the war, the Marconi company sued the United States government for using its patents. The court simply avoided the action by restoring Tesla's patent priority over Marconi's. While much has been said about Tesla's weird habits, his predictions, many of which have happened, are even more confounding. How could a man see into the future? Here are some of the genius's predictions. Number 1. When wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain, which in fact it is, all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles and the instruments through which we shall be able to do this will be amazingly simple compared with our present telephone. A man will be able to carry one in his vest pocket. Does this not fit the description of a smartphone? Number 2. Present wireless receiving apparatus will be scrapped for much simpler machines. Static and all forms of interference will be eliminated, so that innumerable transmitters and receivers may be operated without interference. It is more than probable that the household's daily newspaper will be printed wirelessly in the home during the night. Domestic management, the problems of heat, light and household mechanics will be freed from all labor through beneficent wireless power. This is the Wi-Fi you connect to every day. Number 3. 
As early as 1898, I proposed to representatives of a large manufacturing concern the construction and public exhibition of an automobile carriage which, left to itself, would perform a great variety of operations involving something akin to judgment. This is the self-driving car. Interestingly, a company named after him is one of the leaders in autonomous driving with autopilot. Number 4. When the wireless transmission of power is made commercial, transport and transmission will be revolutionized. Already motion pictures have been transmitted by wireless over a short distance. Later the distance will be illimitable, and by later I mean only a few years hence. Pictures are transmitted over wire. They were telegraphed successfully through the point system 30 years ago. When wireless transmission of power becomes general, these methods will be as crude as is the steam locomotive compared with the electric train. This is wireless energy transmission. Number 5. Perhaps the most valuable application of wireless energy will be the propulsion of flying machines, which will carry no fuel and will be free from any limitations of the present airplanes and dirigibles. We shall ride from New York to Europe in a few hours. International boundaries will be largely obliterated, and a great step will be made toward the unification and harmonious existence of the various races inhabiting the globe. Wireless will not only make possible the supply of energy to regions, however inaccessible, but it will be effective politically by harmonizing international interests. It will create understanding instead of differences. These would be planes that do not need refueling. The concept is based on the ability to transmit energy over long distances without using wires. 